Uh, this webinar will be about post-tension podium slab designs. Now, before we get started, uh, the webinar will focus kind of on the unique aspects of podium construction, not so much on the numerics of a PT two-way slab design. I did a previous webinar about two or three months ago that I'm sure is available that went into more of the specifics of a two-way slab design. And for a lot of ways, in the numerical sense, a podium slab, a, a hotel, a, a parking structure, the design's the same, it's just a little thicker concrete. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time with the two-way slab theory, but more of the unique aspects of podiums and how that relates to post tension concrete. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is give a shameless plug to my book, Post Engine Concrete Principles and Practice, is written by myself and my business partner, Dirk Bondi. Uh, the third edition is being printed right now. Pretty much everything I'm going to cover in this webinar is shown again or covered again in, in a more depth in the book. Uh, the book goes basically from knowing zero about post tension concrete. It's used as the undergraduate course at UCLA. Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and Cal State LA. And then it also transitions into more of the engineering practice in terms of designing garages, designing office buildings, podium structures, mat foundations, and what to look for in construction observation. So uh, if this is at all interesting, there's a lot of pictures in there about what we do at Seneca for a living. And just to remind you, Valentine's Day is coming up. So if you have those hard to reach uh, individuals for a gift, this might actually help you out. But all joking aside, there's a lot of information in there. And if this webinar is interesting for you, a lot of the information is covered in more depth in the book. Now, podium slabs, if you're new to this type of construction, basically you have a very thick transfer deck or a podium slab or a plaza level slab that basically is a separator from a concrete rigid box to a more flexible superstructure. The main difference is the vertical elements of the superstructure do not align with the concrete columns and walls. So the slab itself is meant to transfer the vertical load and lateral load to its own concrete superstructures um, elements. So typically, at least in the West Coast, uh, the superstructure is almost always wood. We've done some metal studs, and in most of these buildings, there are some structural steel uh, components in the open areas, the clubhouses, the fitness areas, where obviously they don't want bearing walls. But I would say the vast, vast majority of the superstructure is done as a wood structure, and basically it's the same wood structure you would see on the ground. It's just now it's lifted up 10 or 20 feet in the air. Uh, Two-way slabs are typically the, the primary floor system. They're almost always used. The beam systems do not work very well simply because, not that they're a bad system, but the beam depth in the three to four foot depth range cause a lot of path of travel issues with the plumbing lines and conduits. And as I'll get further into the seminar, uh, or webinar, excuse me, the beauty or the, the uh, issues of podium slabs are so, not so much the structural engineering aspects, it's fitting all the pieces and parts of four or five stories of wood into a concrete system. Uh, and that's usually the, you know, the beauty or the pain of the system. As I mentioned before, the slab is designed to resist all the vertical loads and the horizontal and uh, vertical lateral forces of the superstructure. So it is in all reality, the foundation of that building. In addition to just being holding itself up vertically, it is the foundation for the wood structure. And a lot, a lot of times, um, if, if you are a concrete specialist like myself and the firm I work for, you may be hired to directly design the concrete structure and may have basically zero to do with the superstructure. And almost all the podiums that we do, we are designing the concrete box and a wood specialist is designing the superstructure. And again, Besides the loading, which is a very simple thing to calculate, and some of the localized hold down effects, there is minimal interaction. So a lot of times you do have two separate structural engineers designing each structure individually. Uh, again, podium slabs, the, in terms of the lateral analysis, the rigidness of these concrete boxes, and typically it's a very thick slab with reinforced concrete shear walls, so there is no vertical combination of lateral forces. Now, obviously, there's no way a wood building could take the whipping effect if the concrete mass was distributed up, so there are several code sections in 7-10 uh, of ASE 7 that allows you to separate the two buildings. Uh, in most conditions, the areas below the podium slab are parking. Now, obviously, no one builds a podium slab just because they want to build a podium slab. Land is expensive and sometimes land is not available. So you either build the podium up 
or you put parking subterranean, but almost, I would say nine times out of 10, what's below the podium slab is the parking for the units above.